Hello, hello. Welcome to Wicked Words, the podcast where you get to listen to my terrible New England accent while I talk about true crime and other dark topics. My name is Brooke, and today's episode is a rather short one because the information um, about the cases, there was either very little information available or the case is still under investigation. So I did the best I could with what I have, but I still felt it was important to make this video and I'm sure that as you listen, you'll understand why. So without further ado, let's begin. Craig Price and Jeffrey Mailhot are names that to this day continue to chill the bones of Rhode Islanders. They were two of the few serial killers who have stalked the ocean state in the last 50 years. Yet, the mention of the monikers still cause a feeling of uneasiness among the community. Rhode Island is such a small state that you could fit it into Alaska 425 times. And you can literally drive from one end to the other in less than an hour. Local news doesn't take long to travel here, especially in the technology age that we live in. And this has led to some speculation that several cases reported in the headlines over the last year may be connected to one another and may even be the result of one person, a newly active serial killer. I moved to Rhode Island from neighboring Massachusetts almost a decade ago, and I have thoroughly enjoyed my tiny town leaps and bounds more than the dreary city that I came from. Despite being blind, I love to scroll through TikTok, and the other day as I sipped my coffee, I stumbled across this video. For those who don't know, in Rhode Island, in the past month or so, there's been rumors of a potential serial killer going around the state because there's been bodies, specifically women. So far, has been three to start off for the year. Last year, there was a lady that was missing in May. She's still missing. But these new bodies that have popped up, it was top of the year, January 3rd. A woman's body in a Coventry pond. And they determined this one to be a possible homicide. Second one, same month of January, a woman's body found dead near TF Green Airport. 51 years old. And the most recent one right here, this one was this month. Burrowville Police ID the woman whose body was found in a pond, another pond, 67 years old. And we have the lady that has disappeared now for nine months. So people are saying this has to be a potential link between them all, or at least the last three of this year, where it could be a serial killer running loose in Rhode Island and targeting specifically women. Shocked, I immediately took note of the cases referenced, fired up the trusty laptop, and began my research. Right away, I realized this creator was simply fear-mongering. The littlest bit of reading proved this theory was completely wrong. However, that doesn't mean that each one of these stories has a clear open and shut ending. I want to discuss each event, the known details, and perhaps you may have some information that could provide some closure. To begin, I made a list of the deaths mentioned in the TikTok video, and I also found some from a Reddit thread, and I organized these by order of date. The first suspected victim is Charlotte Lester. Born on June 28, 1977, Charlotte is a 45-year-old woman who was living in East Greenwich, Rhode Island at the time of her disappearance. She's described by those that knew her as a very nice person who woke up each morning with the goal to accomplish 20 good deeds each day. Her brother Mark said that she was a big animal lover, which made it extremely alarming when her beloved pet dog Chloe was found wandering near Belmont Park on Elmwood Ave alone. Chloe is her baby, he said. Seven miles from where Chloe was located, 
Charlotte's red pickup truck was found in the parking lot of Kent Hospital. A search of the wooded area behind the facility was conducted by friends and family, but the hospital security demanded that the group leave, claiming that they were trespassing. Articles of interest were discovered and turned over to the Warwick police. It was determined through investigation that Charlotte was last seen on May 16th, 2022, on Post Road, only a mile from the 29 Staples Avenue home where Lesta was known to frequent. This property belongs to a man named Mark Perkins, who refuses to cooperate with police. A $15,000 reward was offered initially, and the family hired a private investigator. A second search was set up by friends and family, and they began at Belmont Park, where Chloe was found, and they extended into parts of Providence and Cranston, but nothing was uncovered. Days turned to weeks, and the Lester family increased the reward to $20,000, but by July, missing flyers of Charlotte were being taken down all over the city. A local radio show host named John DePetro refused to let this case go cold, and he began live streaming outside of Perkins' home, demanding answers. Both men were arrested when, on one summer day, DePetro f- was filming and Perkins lunged at him with a lawnmower, claiming that DePetro was trespassing. Perkins doesn't have much of a criminal history besides a DUI back in 1989, but this unprovoked attack may indicate the kind of man he actually is. There hasn't been much news since. The family has a Facebook page called Help Us Find Charlotte Luster, where they post any updates that they they have, including how Chloe is doing in her new home in Newport. I encourage everyone to check out this page, and if you have any tips or any information regarding Charlotte, please reach out to Warwick Police Department. Um, Their number is 401-468-4200, and the Facebook page also has a phone number and an email address where you can contact them directly, um, and that will be linked in my description below. The second event that was initially reported as suspicious hit headlines in September 2022, when a neighbor rang up the Woonsocket Police Department requesting a welfare check at 2 Marion Lane. She hadn't heard from her neighbor in over a week, and when she appeared at the doorstep to knock, a foul odor had greeted her. Woonsocket Police entered the home of former Mayor Susan Menard and found two severely decomposed bodies, one male and one female, both elderly. They couldn't be identified and their cause of death couldn't be determined on scene. The medical examiner would have to perform autopsies to confirm that information. The home belonged to Susan Menard, the first female mayor of Woonsocket. Born on December 31, 1948, in Woonsocket, to Teresa and Albert Menard, Susan got her start on the school committee council in 1981, before moving on to serve as the first female president on Woonsocket City Council. Menard held this title for a decade, and in 1995, she was elected as the first female mayor of Woonsocket. She maintained that position until she resigned in 2009 after the death of her daughter. Susan is remembered as the longest serving mayor of the city and one of only four female mayors in Rhode Island's history. On September 17th, Robert Miller, Menard's older brother, passed away. She was listed as surviving him in his obituary. However, only three days later, her body was discovered along with 
the, her partner, Daniel Grabowski. Grabowski was known as Menard's long-term boyfriend and is known locally as the former founder and CEO of Woonsocket's Boys and Girls Club. It was determined that he had passed away from type 2 diabetes while Menard's cause of death was listed as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD. No foul play was found. Menard is survived by her sister Marilyn and her grandchildren, according to her Wikipedia page. The third story about the fourth body found is the only case confirmed to be homicide. The victim's name has not been released, so for sake of brevity, I will refer to her as Carbuncle Doe as she was found by an angler on December 21st under the ice of, by the dock on Carbuncle Pond in Coventry, Rhode Island. Initially, the Department of Environmental Management uh, investigated her death and deemed it, the circumstances surrounding her death suspicious, so they referred the case to the Rhode Island State Police. The State Police have held details extremely tight they have not released anything to the public. And as a result, residents have been avoiding the area, despite the fact that the DEM recently stocked the pond with fish. If you have any information, you can reach out to the Coventry Police Department, the Rhode Island State Police, or the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management, and they will all take the information and pass it to whoever is in charge. The first case reported in 2023 is the story of Roseanne Yaros. On January 17th, a woman's body was found on a patch of grass by the Red Beam Garage near TF Green Airport in Warwick. Police confirmed there were no obvious signs of trauma, but the cause of death would need to be determined by the medical examiner. From what I could find, nothing has been released to date. Roseanne Yorosk was born in Providence on January 15, 1972. She was one of Anna and Adam Yorosk's three daughters. Roseanne graduated from Tolman High School in Pawtucket in 1992 and began attending Johnson Wales University. She worked in the food and beverage industry for years and she was also the mother of two children and the grandmother of two. She was described as having a big heart and being full of joy, but Eros had a history of arrests for domestic violence, obstruction, and abuse or neglect of a person with a severe disability. She seemed to have hit a really rough patch in the last decade or so, which unfortunately might have contributed to her passing. Lastly, the body of a 67-year-old woman named Jane Finkelstein was located partially submerged in Little Round Top Pond in Barrelville on February 5th, 2023. While another elderly woman found in a pond may have your ears perked up a bit, this case is actually deemed to be an accidental death. Finkelstein was an avid outdoors woman who loved to run and mountain bike in the nearby woods. She was described as perpetually in motion when she wasn't working. Jane grew up in New York City and moved to Boston for college after being accepted to Harvard University. She earned her bachelor's degree in English Lit and transferred to Simmons College to earn her master's in social work, wrapping up her education with a doctorate in clinical psychology. She began her career in private practice as a child psychologist with an office in Holliston, Massachusetts. Jane was fond of animals, especially cats, and she loved nature. Her best friend said that she was committed to maintaining warm and long-term friendships. 
a couple who were checking the ice for fishing that morning came across Finkelstein's body 20 feet from the shore. There was no evidence of foul play, but it seems clear that she had been uh, walking on the ice and fallen through and was unable to pull herself out. Even though Rhode Island is a small state and the news seems to travel really fast, details seem to get lost along the way. Regardless of the fact that these cases aren't related to one another or that there's even a serial killer, they're equally deserving of being told and each story is important to be remembered. Each one of these people had an impact on the community that we live in, in one way or another. And I think that that is extremely significant to keep in mind. So as I usually do in my episodes, I try to encourage you to do something in honor of the stories that we told. And today's theme seems to really be centered around community. And I want to encourage my listeners to participate in their community somehow, whether it be volunteering your time at an animal shelter or volunteering your time at a hospital. I think giving an impact on your community is important and that's the lesson that should be taken. I know I haven't been uploading as often. Unfortunately, I thought that it would be school taking up a majority of my time, but my health has been the biggest issue lately and that's not something I can kind of put on the back burner so I've been focusing on that and trying to do as much research when I feel up to it so that I can record and get videos out to you guys as soon as I can so I hope you're all doing well and I hope you're enjoying your new year and uh, just want to encourage you all to stay safe As always, I'll catch you on the flip side.